Hey guys, welcome back to another SUP Border Review. We're going to be looking at something a little bit different this week. We're going to be looking at some land paddle boards and we're going to be looking at two boards from Handboards. Handboards are a skate company based in Huntington Beach, California, and we've been given two boards to try. We've been given a longer board, which is a Pinger, which is a 5.7, which retails at £389, and we'll be given a Fish, which is 4 foot 5, and it retails at £349. Now before we go into what it's like land paddling on these boards, first of all let's talk about the spec and what's happening below the boards. The wheels and trucks these boards have, they have ABEX 7 bearings inside the wheels. The wheels themselves are 90mm, nice big chunky wheels, offer you a lot of grip. The trucks themselves are from a brand called Original, they're a top end skate truck. Um, and most of the skaters out there would recognise that ABEC, an Original brand, they make really nice good quality um, trucks and bearings. So it's a really nice setup on that sort of base of the board. There's a bamboo full deck which you can see and it's also finished off with a UV cured um, grippy surface there which is great for shoes and bare feet as well. The subboarder impressions of the hand boards and also a bit of land paddling background as well. Um, we first started land paddling about four or five years ago, got out on long boards and started paddling around with a few sticks. It was alright fun, it okay, but it didn't set our world on fire. And last summer Handboard UK gave us a couple of these to try in a car park and to be honest we were totally blown away with how different a board can make the land paddling scene feel. Not only how much fun they were, but how similar they felt to carving a turn on a surf up. Very easy to pick up and use these sort of boards, you don't have to have much sort of skateboard background. Notice your two sweet spots if you stand in the midsection of the board, you can pretty much just glide down the hill or a gentle slope without the board feeling too erratic or carvy. But as soon as you plant your weight over the edges, over the rails of the board, the board instantly drives into a turn, just like it would do on a surf up, just like you do on a small wave. By using a stick as well, in effect of the being your paddle, the board does feel incredibly similar to sup surfing. You really can push yourself into do like to do backside transitions, top turns, cutbacks, and you can throw the stick around to reenact that sort of transition with your paddle on the wave. It really does feel like sup surfing. I cannot get across how much this feels like sup surfing on the land. Compared to my old style longboard where I used to carve around and do a few turns, this has no resemblance to the old school. Probably the turning circle on these sort of boards, you can turn a t carve a turn within about 10 feet, so you can really bank, bank the board around hard, exactly like you would do on a wave face. The two boards themselves, we've got the Pinger, which is a slightly longer one, a bit more classic style, slightly drawn out more turns, easy to do step over and walk to the nose, hang five, hang ten, really is a lot of fun. Suddenly you feel riding barefoot in that, you sort of feel quite summery and it's all nice and smooth. This one's a little bit more progressive, the fish slightly smaller at four foot five, a little bit tighter turning because of the shorter wheelbase and really for that a little bit more progressive surfing. Still do a few step over to sort of walk to the nose but obviously there's not that much nose to walk to. A bit more progressive the fish, a little bit drawn out, a bit more classic longboard style the pinger. Both the boards are finished exactly the same with the same fittings and the same deck features. Um, really nicely finished, you can see layers of bamboo, in cuts down there for the bottom for the wheels so they carve and they hit the deck. A really nicely finished product. Who are the handboards best suited for? Really for a really wide range of people. It doesn't really, it's not really weight dependent. You can get a, be a big guy and go on a small board or you can be a really small person and on a big board. Um, as far as if you're a landlocked surfer, these things are gonna be great. They really are gonna help you sup surfing. Um, you're gonna go to the coast and then suddenly you feel like you'll be surfing better because you've been riding these. So for that landlocked surfer and for that person who wants to put that training in and just have a lot of fun on the roads, these boards are aimed for you. Negatives or downsides, the only negatives we've come up with is because these boards are made of a bamboo, which is generally quite a soft wood. If you do have any scrapes or scra scratches on the road, they do mark up a little bit, but that's sort of skateboarding in general. You can't really get away from that too much. The value for money question, well, it's definitely one of the most expensive skateboards out there, but to be honest, it's more like buying another SUP, so I really do feel like it's value for money at the sort of mid-300 price point. The overall SUP border verdict of the Pinger and the Fish from Handboards, these boards are a lot of fun, a lot of fun, and they really will help your SUP surfing and help you carve those turns when you're nowhere near water. If you have any comments or questions about handboards, please leave them in the comment section below, and for more information about paddleboarding and skateboards and handboards and our reviews, visit SUPBorderMag.com. Thank you.